We're in a pandemic, but it's time for academics. So let's make sure you all pass this credit. It's a new year to learn about the planet. Like Lincoln Park, we'll be theorising in hybrid. Your temperature matters, so does the temperature of the planet. Some of us are gonna be on campus. We're all gonna try not to spread this virus. Wear a mask when you're in class. We're in a pandemic, but it's time for academics. So let's make sure you all pass this credit. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to EMVS 110. Today, I'm going to be talking about the powers of the presidency with respect to disaster prevention and disaster preparation. The reason that I want to talk about disasters when it comes to the president is not just because there are sometimes disasters at the same time as there are presidents. It's because the president and the executive branch have a big role to play in helping to mitigate the impact of disasters. And as climate change continues to get worse, it's important to examine what the government can do in the aftermath of extreme weather events. And as we go through a pandemic, it's important to look at how the government can try and deal with crises. So environmental policy can actually have a big role in disaster prevention, and the way that we respond to disasters can have a big impact on the environment. Historically, disaster policy in the US has been reactive. Before the Second World War, the way that the US thought about extreme weather events was basically that they were something to be responded to when they happened, but not something that you would plan policy around. Now, that's changed, and we think about disaster policy as coming under four headings. First, there's how we prepare for disasters. Then there's how we respond in the immediate aftermath of a disaster. Then there's the recovery phase. And then there's the way that we try to mitigate future disasters. As these policies have developed, we've started to place more and more emphasis around the world on the other phases apart from response. So how do we prepare? How do we recover? And how do we mitigate future disasters? One of the ways that the executive branch has tried to do this is through encouraging other governments to play their parts. So if you think about it, the types of disasters that are likely to happen are very different around the country. And so the types of disasters that you want governments to be ready for should be tailored to their local area. It doesn't make sense to prepare for tornadoes in a place where there aren't going to be tornadoes. And it doesn't make sense to prepare for earthquakes in places where there aren't earthquakes. So State and local governments are eligible to receive 20% higher grants for mitigation if they write what's called a hazard mitigation plan. Now, not every municipality within every state has done this. You can see that in the Midwest, lots of little municipalities. You can see that in the Midwest, the states that are shaded red here, are places where municipalities haven't really completed their hazard mitigation plans. But other states, like Washington, and I think that's Montana, have, their municipalities have completed a lot of hazard mitigation plans and gotten these um, grants as a result. Officially, it's those state and local governments that are supposed to engage in disaster response policy. So it's important that they have a plan for how to do that. You may be wondering what the Galesburg plan looks like. So Galesburg did write a hazard mitigation plan and they focused on the types of disasters that are most likely to happen around here. So that's tornadoes, floods, and chemical spills from the trains. The charts that we have here are of what a chlorine gas spill would look like if it happened at one of the busiest train intersections in Galesburg. You can see how it would spread throughout the town in the direction of the prevailing wind and the different areas that would need to be evacuated uh, because of the gas. You can also see from the map of Illinois here that there haven't been many FEMA declared disasters, and we'll talk about what that specifically means in the next video. But there haven't been many of those big disasters in Knox County since the 1960s. There have been more in places like Cook County and places closer to the Mississippi River where floods are more common. 
In the next video, I'm going to talk about how the president can respond to disasters when they happen, and we'll talk more about the four phases of disaster policy. But with that, thank you for your attention, and I'll see you soon. Cheerio!